have essentially an emergence of a completely new set of technology, which I think is going to be a revolutionary. And it will do that instantly. It removes all the barriers to creation. I think people aren't ready for that. I'm not ready for that. That will all be done in the next couple of decades, better, cheaper, faster by AI. Of that exponential uh, growth of the power of these models. I'm not claiming, by the way, that this is the last innovation in AI or this is the last model architecture. Uh, there's going to be lots more to come. But if you look at what has happened between GPT-3 to 3.5 to what comes next, this is not linear progress. I think it's probably worth stating is this didn't just happen. Uh, that is ChatGPT uh, and GPT family of models. This is something that we've been partnered with OpenAI deeply now for multiple years. Um, and we built in Azure our public cloud infrastructure, uh, an AI supercomputer, uh, which, by the way, as a systems architecture, has been a massive breakthrough because the way these workloads or the the way you train large models is very different than anything uh, out there. It's um, the economic opportunity, I think, is much better understood today. So therefore, I look at it and say is it doesn't matter if you are a knowledge worker or a frontline worker, use these tools to actually then get more leverage in your job. And that's the way. I think the best way to prepare for it is to sort of not bet against this technology and this technology helping you in your job, in your business process. And especially at a time like this, Matt, like here we are, right? We have inflation, we have all of this macroeconomic headwinds. Doing more with less is perhaps more at a premium. And so if I find any technology that allows us to be more productive, let's take that. The difference between, I would say, all this Web3 and AI, uh, and quite frankly, even Metaverse, is all of these three things are all going to happen. But you need to have the killer apps. What is the use case that gets broad adoption? What's the chat GPT moment uh, on blockchain? I'm interested in when uh, it'd be fun to say, okay, create me new life forms. I mean, we're not far from that. Well, you know, I'm going to leave that to other bioethicists. I don't want to stuff my foot in that one. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is happening all at once. And so it's not just biology or physics or sociology. All these models, all these technologies all seem to be converging at once. So you can create anything. And all the barriers are dropping at once. Yeah, so, and that's complicated. Do you think anybody truly understands how fast the world is about to change? No. I mean, like, look at creative industry. Video games, $180 billion a year. Like, Disney spends $10 billion a year. Amazon, $16 billion a year on content. All of that's going to change in the next couple of years alone, just from one tiny little two gigabyte file. You can train a model now in like less than an hour with 10, 100 images of yourself to put yourself in anything for a buck. <laughs> because we've done the heavy lifting of millions of bucks of pre-training the model, as it were. Yeah. Whereas classically, AI wasn't like that. So my thing is that, again, this is fundamental infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Access to this technology is a fundamental human right. Because otherwise, what you're going to have, this is a discussion that, you know, I know you've had many times, superhumans and normal humans. Yeah. The ability to communicate and create makes you superhuman. This AI can be finally the thing that can stabilize a complex system that is humanity and allow us to achieve our potential. That's, that's a, a platform, an infrastructure platform that uplifts all of humanity. Yes. And again, it should be run by the people for the people. Uh, so what I always try to do is I try to make it a win-win for everyone to participate, to help, to extend this. And at a time of absolute change, you can make that happen. I think it's interesting that if you asked people 10 years ago about how AI was going to have an impact, with a lot of confidence from almost most people, you would have heard, you know, first it's going to come for the blue collar jobs, working in the factories, truck drivers, whatever. Then it will come for the kind of like the low skill white collar jobs. Then the very high skill, like really high IQ uh, white collar jobs, like a programmer or whatever, and then very last of all, and maybe never, it, it's going to take the creative jobs. And it's really gone exactly, the, and it's going exactly the other direction. And my, my most optimistic hope for the future is that humans and AI are some sort of hybrid, merged human and AI together is just sort of far more capable than, than either on their own. The, the meta skill of learning to figure things out and that it can go decide to get good at whatever you need. Um, so for me, like, that's, that's kind of like AGI. Uh, and then super intelligence is when it's like smarter than all of humanity put together.
Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more.